Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn how to balance redox reactions in acidic solution. All right, so the first thing you'll wanna do is to assign oxidation states to all atoms and identify substances being oxidized and reduced. And so in a previous video, I had discussed and reviewed over rules of assigning oxidation states. So make sure you feel comfortable before watching um, this video with that material. Separate the overall reaction into two half reactions. Balance each half reaction with respect to mass first, so just counting atoms, in the following order. So first, what you wanna do is balance all elements other than hydrogen and oxygen first and then balance oxygen by adding water and then finally balance hydrogen by adding H plus because we're in acidic solution. So you have to follow these in order. Then step four, balance each half reaction with respect to charge. So first mass and then charge by adding electrons. Make the number of electrons in both half reactions equal by multiplying one or both half reactions by a small whole number. You'll see this in the next example problem. We'll work together. And then add the half reactions together, canceling electrons and any other species as necessary. There's a lot of rules here, I know, but if you follow these step by step in order, then you'll be successful in balancing redox reactions in acidic solution. And in all honesty, it just takes practice, practice, practice with these sorts of problems. So let's go ahead, we'll work example together, have these rules available as I talk through this. So let's balance the redox reaction in acidic solution. So first things first, we always assign oxidation states so that we can quickly realize what's being oxidized and reduced. So remember, copper is in its pure elemental form, so it gets an oxidation state of zero. Monoatomic ions get the oxidation state of their charge, so plus two. So we see that copper is becoming more positive, which means it's losing electrons. It must be undergoing what? Good, oxidation. Now, nitrogen wasn't on that list um, in terms of when we learned those rules together in the previous video, but oxygen was, and oxygen must be negative too. And remember rule number three, everything has to add up if it's neutral to zero, if it's ionic, then to the charge. So this needs to add up to negative one. Negative two times three is negative six. What does nitrogen have to be in order for it to add up to negative one? Excellent, plus five. So plus five minus six is equal to negative one. So the oxidation state of nitrogen is positive five. Remember, oxidation states are not real. Um, however, they allow us to see any changes in electron density from one side to the other. So here, oxygen, once again, is negative two. Negative two times two is negative four. So nitrogen must be what here? Positive four, good, because it needs to add up to zero. <clears throat> it's a neutral molecule of nitrogen dioxide, right? And so we do see that nitrogen's becoming more negative, so that tells us it's undergoing reduction. Okay, so that's the first thing you just wanna analyze here. Then you wanna separate them out into half reactions. So I'm gonna do the copper one first. So copper. And the first rule of thumb is to balance out by mass all other elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. It looks like everything's one-to-one, -one, so we're good. 
It also says to add water to balance oxygen. That's not needed here. There's no oxygen species present. And then also to balance the hydrogen, but once again, we don't have to worry about that. Then we need to just balance out the charge. So here, this was zero, this is plus two. How many electrons does copper need to lose? Excellent, two electrons. So that they're equal on both sides based on charge. So plus two minus two is zero, and this is zero over on this side as well. All right, and when we also identify that it's undergoing oxidation, and so therefore copper must be the reducing agent. Good. All right, let's look at the nitrogen species here. So we have NO3 nitrate to give us. And like I said in my previous video, when it comes to separating half reactions, find the species on either side of the arrow that look like they're siblings of one another, like they're related, right? So this one is clear to be like, okay, they must be related to one another. And these species must be related to one another. So they have both like nitrogens and oxygens. So that's what I like to think about when I choose my half reactions. So first things first, we balance by mass and you balance all other elements besides hydrogen and oxygen. And so in this case, that would be nitrogen. They're one to one, so we're okay. We don't need to balance that. But then we need to balance the oxygens by adding water. That's the next rule. So we have three oxygens on this side. We have two oxygens on the right side. How many waters do we need and to which side to balance out the oxygens? Good, you need one water on the product side. And if that's not clear, let's look at it. How many oxygens do we have now? We have one, two, three. How many do we have on this side? Three. So by adding that water, we were able to balance the oxygens. Then the final rule for balancing mass is balancing hydrogens by adding H plus ions because we're in acidic solution. So how many hydrogens do we have on this side? Two. So how many H plus ions do we need on this side? Two. Very good. All right. So we're balanced by mass. Now we need to be balanced by charge, right? And so what you wanna do here is you wanna look at the overall charge. And here it looks like it's plus two. So always take into account stoichiometric coefficient. So two times a plus one is plus two, minus one. So plus two minus one is a plus one. And over on this side, what's the overall charge? Zero. So we need to add an electron or, you know, electrons so that both sides of the arrow, they don't always have to both be zero, but like they just need to be equal to one another. And so in this case, we want this to be zero or this is zero. We want this to be equal to that. It's positive one. So you can only add electrons to help out with the charge balance. So we need to add one electron. And there's a reason why I always write the negative because I want to remember that electrons negative. So a negative one plus two minus one is equal to zero. Once again, it doesn't always mean that both sides are equal to zero. Sometimes you just need them both equal to negative one or whatever it is. But remember, you can only add electrons to either side of the arrow in order to kind of balance out the electrical charge. Okay. Now, remember that oxidation can't happen without reduction, and reduction cannot happen without oxidation. And this was reduction here. And so when these two electrons are lost, they're transferred completely to this reduction reaction. So it's really important that these numbers are equal to one another. So in order for that to happen, I need to multiply this entire equation by a small whole number. And what would that number be? By two, good. Because we wanna represent that like, okay, these two electrons are lost and then they're gained over here. So let's write down the new equation when we multiply by two. So we have two electrons plus four, 
H plus ions plus two nitrate to give us two nitrogen dioxide plus two water. <clears throat> All right, so now we are balanced by mass for both half reactions. We're balanced by charge. Now we want to add them up together. So let's go ahead and write down when we add up, let me go ahead and highlight that so you see that this half reaction plus this half reaction together. So we get two electrons and it doesn't matter the order. Um, if you want to do the copper one first, that's totally fine. But you just put all the reactants on the left side of the arrow and all of the products on the right side of the arrow. And cancel out like species. So the electrons definitely cancel out because they've transferred. And then anything else cancels out. And we don't see that happening here for this equation, but it does happen um, quite often in the overall equation in the end. So overall, what you would write as your final answer is everything that's left over after cancellation takes place. And there you go. That is this reaction balance in acidic solution. And we see those H plus ions there. It represents that the solution is acidic. And what I would suggest that you do is try to do this problem again without looking at the answer itself or how we derived it. But instead have these rules, like I said, right next to you derive it, talk yourself through it slowly but surely so that you will feel more comfortable with the order so that you can do it on your own for other problems. All right. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.